Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Foreign Correspondence Club of Japan. My name is Martin Kolling and I will be the moderator for today. Uh, to make a long introduction short, um, I'm very excited to uh, introduce today's guest speakers because they are uh, launching a, an event, one of the youngest movements basically in the a startup scene in the oldest industrialized country of the world and I would like to know why that is. Um, I will stop here to make the introduction. I just will introduce the speakers in the order uh, of the appearance. The f our first speaker will be Antti Soninen, uh, who is kind of a global citizen growing up in a Swedish-Finnish family. Uh, and in Finland and America. He then came to Japan later. Uh, I don't know, but do you speak Japanese too? I guess yes. so too. So he is uh, multilingual, has a strong interest in uh, languages and uh, also developed a strong interest in uh, the struggles of Japanese startup companies uh, tapping the global potential. The second speaker is uh, Mr. Taizo Sun the younger brother of Masayoshi-san, the founder of Cherme, uh, uh, SoftBank. But he has a long list of companies uh, uh, he founded for himself. And now he is uh, um, pres uh, the CEO of Mistletoe and uh, also um, chairman of the online gaming company Gungho, which I like quite a lot. And then the third speaker uh, is uh, Yoshimitsu Kaji. Uh, just uh, basically mm, telling you about his career uh, takes almost up a whole afternoon. He has made so many stops. Uh, he started at Fuji Bank, went to Coca-Cola, Sony Pictures, Nissan, and then worked as um, um, yeah, what was it? As counselor and director of global IT communication strategy for three Japanese prime ministers from 2011 to 2013, and now is with Accenture, uh, the director of marketing and communications, and voluntarily uh, as co CMO of Slash Asia. So now I will open the floor to the first speaker. Please give our guests a very warm welcome. Can we see something? Not yet. Um, it's connected, but I can't see anything. Happens every time. Now let's see. So maybe, maybe the computer is at fold this time. It, it worked perfectly fine five minutes ago. <laughs> Can you change it to B? Okay, now we go, hopefully. Okay. Oh, good. Okay, I think we will start now. <laughs> All right. Uh, good, e good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Antti, like as introduced before. Um, I'm the, the CEO of uh, Slash Asia. And I'd like to tell you a bit about the background of the, of the project. So uh, Slush uh, is an event and a movement that originally started in Finland in 2008. And uh, it was a time when uh, uh, there was this company uh, called Nokia that had a very large uh, market share in the, in the world uh, of smartphones. And uh, basically everyone that was young and talented uh, was expected to work over there. 
And uh, basically starting a company at the time uh, uh, was generally not thought to be uh, that, that uh, big of an idea. Or, but uh, uh, this changed uh, through slush. And uh, uh, students have been very much in the center of, of slush. Uh, it was originally started in 2008 by uh, Peter Westerbach and, uh, and a few other, other people. And in 2011, uh, the students of Aalto University joined the movement. And uh, uh, the event that was originally a few hundred people uh, uh, last year was 14,000 people. Uh, yes, and last year's event was 14,000 people and almost 2,000 people in staff. Uh, this uh, inf uh, atmosphere of, of going to large companies uh, has then changed, and uh, uh, Finnish startups and Finnish, uh, Finnish uh, entrepreneurs have been starting to pop up in international media. For example, uh, as displayed here on the screen, uh, one Nordic furniture company uh, uh, was bought by Fab, uh, which is one of which uh, at least used to be one of the one of the leading startups in, uh, in New York. And uh, also Supercell and Rovio have been very much in the news. Uh, Facebook and Google have recently been very actively uh, searching for companies to buy in Finland. And uh, Slush also has gathered uh, uh, numerous uh, fans that of high caliber. For example, this is the prime minister of Finland, um, uh, previous one. Uh, he said that he comes to Slush every year uh, mm -hmm. to learn new things and see where the country is going. And um, uh, he was recently asked uh, what, uh, what the Finnish government has, has done to, to contribute to the startup boom. Uh, and uh, I think he said something like, uh, uh, I think our biggest contribution was, was that we let the, the passionate young people do what they do best. At last year's event, also uh, the vice premier of China, which is basically, I, if I understand correctly, their number three guy, uh, was also one of the speakers. Uh, 2013, the president of Estonia also took the stage. Uh, the Prime Minister of UK, Mr. Cameron, was also, he wasn't there uh, at the time of uh, slush, but he was there, uh, I think, uh, right after or right before uh, slush. And, uh, on, on the left on the picture, you can see uh, Miki Kuusi, uh, who was heading, heading uh, slush in Finland last year. And basically, uh, I think Miki was at the time 25, and when he introduced himself to, to the Prime Minister Cameron, uh, hi, nice to meet you, my name is Miki, I think the answer was something, something along the lines uh, like, uh, I was, you, no, Miki, you don't need to introduce yourself. We, we've read all about you and slush back in, in the UK, and uh, uh, we'd like to learn uh, as much as we can from you. Uh, also, King of Sweden uh, visited uh, the uh, uh, accelerator space that uh, Slush is uh, affiliated with, Startup Sauna. And uh, Russian Prime Minister Medvedev uh, uh, was also there. Even uh, the South Korean Prime Minister visited uh, Startup Sauna uh, uh, with um, around the time of slush. And uh, so this is basically what the, the kind of things that have happened in Finland in only a, a few years. And what we want to do next is we want to bring the same kind of energy to Asia. And uh, uh, that's how Slush Asia originally got, uh, got started. Um, uh, currently we have uh, 3,000 people signed up to the event. Um, uh, that includes uh, over 100 investors, uh, uh, almost 300 startups, and uh, I think we're counting close to 200 media representatives. Why do we want to do Slush Asia? Uh, the, the, the three biggest points that we want to accomplish is uh, bring global thinking into, into Asia and uh, Japan. Uh, we want to uh, give uh, local startups here the courage uh, to go abroad and also we want to uh, give uh, foreign startups expanding over here into this region also an easier way to, to enter these markets. Uh, second point, uh, many of the startup related uh, communities uh, in, in the area are uh, 
they have a very strong invitation only culture and they are somewhat uh, they're not as not as um, uh, uh, or let's say uh, slush is a very open community in Finland uh, there's very very uh, less hierarchy than in, in many other events and it's also uh, it's not something that you have to be a, a member of an invited only club uh, third point we want to show how cool startups are there's actually in, in, in Japan and many of the neighboring countries there are actually lots of startup events um, uh, one thing that slush is one way that slush is different from all these other events is that it showcases the energy and the passion of young founders and gives them the rock star status that they deserve um, uh, I think uh, Taizo san often likes to likes to say say this but uh, in the 60s and 70s, bands like Beatles uh, changed the world uh, through their mu music. And uh, nowadays, uh, many technology companies and startups are changing the world in the same way, such as, for example, Facebook, where the founder was, was very young. Mark Zuckerberg was very young, and he's now reaching, reaching I think, uh, more than a billion people o almost on a daily basis. So uh, uh, we believe that this kind of achievement should be celebrated uh, properly and uh, because of this we want to make uh, startup events and the community less formal and, and, uh, and more rock and roll. Uh, the event on Friday will be hosting on, uh, it will be, the venue will be uh, feature white rock tents. So we'll be building five of these to the venue, they're actually already ready. This is a 3D rendering that we made in the production team. Um, uh, here's a more detailed map. So we have uh, the keynote stage on the bottom, then there's the pitching contest stage, uh, second demo stage and demo area, uh, and then there's the installations at the entrance. Then we have uh, meeting rooms and interview rooms for uh, to facilitate startup and investor matchmaking, as well as uh, connections with media. Uh, Slush Cafe in the middle is a casual meeting place for um, uh, different uh, keynote speakers and startups, and they will have very interactive QA type of sessions with the speakers. Uh, who is going to be there? Um, we have uh, around 30 uh, high-caliber keynote speakers at the event. Uh, a little more, more than half of the speakers are non-Japanese. Um, we have speakers from uh, most continents, actually. Um, uh, some, of, some of the speakers uh, are, are, have been all, uh, previously to slush events in Finland, but most of them uh, are attending slush uh, for the first time. And... Uh, the pitching contest that we will have uh, is going to have 50 startups. And uh, uh, I don't have the latest number, but uh, uh, last time I checked, more than a third of the companies were from abroad and flying in especially for this event. Uh, to my knowledge, I, I'm not aware of any other pitching contest in, in Japan that attracts uh, this, kind of, this kind of international attention. Um, we also have a demo stage and a demo area that will showcase the, the latest, uh, latest uh, uh, startups uh, and hardware uh, uh, in, um, in uh, the uh, field. Here's some renderings of the food and beverage space, meeting space, and uh, yeah. This is pretty much what the event is going to look like. Uh, uh, let's rock Japan together, thank you. Hello, my name is Taizo Son. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the co-founder, uh, one of the founding member of the Slush Asia movement here in Japan. So uh, from my side, uh, I will explain uh, why do we introduce uh, Slush to Asia here in Japan and Asia. Um, as you know, uh, the Prime Minister Abe uh, is now executing the, uh, the three, three arrows concept strategy. Uh, and as you know, the, the third arrow 
uh, is now come, uh, they are promoting a third arrow, the, the growth strategy. And uh, uh, according to the Japanese government, and, uh, and as also the, as far as I know, uh, for me personally, uh, the growth strategy means uh, that, that they will uh, do, do their best to deregulate the existing regulations uh, so that uh, the new startups can uh, the create that innovative products and services. So you know that there are so many, so many regulations uh, is now uh, obsessed uh, is obsessing uh, the, the creating innovative and disruptive uh, the the new 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 services and products. So, but uh, on the other hand, uh, of course, there I, I think there are so many things uh, Japanese uh, national government can do. But on the other hand, uh, the startup is driven by the private sectors. So uh, for me, I, me personally, uh, I felt that uh, we should do something to revitalize Japan. So um, <clears throat> um, I'm sorry, this is uh, uh, OK. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah. So uh, uh, from my perspective, I think uh, the encouraging the new young entrepreneurs, Japanese entrepreneurs, uh, is the key to revitalize Japan. And uh, this is a chart that uh, uh, the venture capital uh, investment, a uh, new investment by the venture capitals versus uh, the out of the GDP. And uh, as you know, the United States is investing a lot of money uh, to, to for, for the new startups uh, and venture sectors. Uh, so according to the, uh, the, the data, um, the uh, late 02 percent of the GDP is uh, was is is for for the new startups, in, in, including a Silicon Valley. On, and also the euro is also uh, the big GDP market, and uh, uh, in, but uh, uh, in China and Japan, and uh, so the 0.04 percent uh, is now investing into Japan, uh, the, the venture venture sectors. And uh, you know, um, uh, I heard from the one of the venture captures uh, in Silicon Valley that uh, uh, the 0.2 percent of the GDP is invest. Has has invested into the uh, the startups ten years ago, and then uh, ten years later, uh, over twenty percent uh, of the GDP, uh, entire GDP, is driven by the the startups uh, uh, ten years ago for, uh, during the ten years, in, like, like uh, Google or Facebook or Apple and so on. So, uh, uh, so that number shows that uh, the the. Promoting the startups is the key for the grow, growth strategy, and also this is uh, Japanese uh, data in Japanese uh, by, researched by the Japanese uh, uh, the Ministry of Economy, and uh, so those are the uh, the history of the company. And so less than ten years, a ten year old company is recruiting the new employees, but uh, on the other hand, uh, the the elder companies, older companies, uh, now restructuring uh, and laying off the, the employees. This is a fact. So uh, in a sense, uh, this chart also shows that the, uh, the encouraging the new startups is good for, for, for the, uh, the labor, uh, the improvement of the labor uh, late, rate, OK? And, uh, and also, if you look at the, uh, the, uh, the entire volume of the venture cap investment by the venture capitals in Japan, uh, so in 2012, uh, uh, some, some de decrease, uh, decreased, but uh, the, uh, the totally uh, the, the growing uh, in these days. And also, uh, this is a very uh, significant chart, but uh, uh, the number of that IPOs in Japan is uh, dramatically growing, especially in these days. Uh, so last year, uh, 86 companies will, has been listed to the Japanese stock market newly. And, uh, uh, but uh, uh, the first quarter of this year, 
uh, only the three months, within the three months, uh, the tw 25 uh, companies has been listed to the Japanese stock market newly. So uh, uh, we estimated that over 130 companies will be stock listed on the stock market this year. So um, now the market is now booming, uh, and also uh, so we we can uh, look forward uh, the the growth of the those those new startups numbers. But uh, and also uh, um, this is a, a top six countries uh, by the number of IPOs in uh, 2015 first quarter of this year, and uh, China is amazing, but uh, uh, Japan is number three. So not bad, but still uh, the smaller number. So I think uh, we should promote more to revitalize Japan. So and uh, especially in these days, uh, I I found uh, I saw many times many things uh, that the new momentums is now happening in Japan. Um, those are the examples. Uh, the, the created by the younger generations, 20s or early 30s, uh, young people, uh, Japanese young people started, uh, has started creating a new innovative products. And uh, uh, the interestingly, uh, I found that uh, those new uh, products uh, created by the new startups is spin-offs uh, from the big companies, uh, big electronic manufacturers like uh, Sony or Toyota or Honda, uh, and Toshiba and so on. So uh, as you might know, uh, the, for, for longer time, for, for last tens of years, uh, the talented people uh, was, were working for uh, uh, the big companies because uh, Japanese economy was designed uh, to uh, that uh, innova innovation will be uh, will would be created by the Japanese big established companies or institute of the research uh, or the universities, but uh, unfortunately, uh, the, especially in these days, uh, the Japanese big big guys are still struggling. Uh, so uh, some young talented people started spin off. Uh, from those companies, and uh, uh, they, be they became a very brave to start creating something from scratch. And also, uh, I found um, so many uh, new new trends that uh, around the University of Tokyo, uh, there are so many um, hardcore tech ventures, uh, tech startups is now popping up, st are start popping up, and uh, uh, traditionally uh, the. Uh, Japanese universities uh, have created uh, the so many innovative technology itself uh, and write uh, uh, reports or uh, uh, and and so on. But uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, those technologies were not uh, uh, the spin-off from the university and uh, uh, will, would not uh, be commercialized. But uh, in these days, uh, those uh, researchers or the uh, uh, the PhD students or the doctors or uh, so professors, uh, even the professors uh, started creating a company by themselves. And also uh, the, uh, the Tokyo University and the uh, major university of Japan uh, has created uh, some venture funds uh, to, to, to promote uh, those activities. So this is a new trend. And, uh, uh, and they have amazing uh, technology resources. So that's why uh, uh, that they, uh, cre uh, they are creating a not, uh, very uh, competitive and a very innovative technology by themselves. So I think uh, those are the great potentials uh, to, to revitalize Japan. And also, uh, um, I, I'm working for, uh, uh, I've been working for uh, uh, over 20 years uh, in, in the IT industry, uh, especially focusing on the in, in internet sectors. And I have experienced a lot of the uh, launching the new companies or the new services. And also, uh, from year 2011, uh, after the big earthquake, uh, I, I started the new uh, activities uh, which means uh, uh, the, not only uh, create the company by myself, but also uh, I started supporting the younger generations uh, to, to create the new startups. 
So uh, from 2011, uh, I started Movida Japan, uh, which is a, a seed accelerator. Seed accelerator means uh, we will uh, give them uh, the small small number of uh, uh, the money to so that they can create a prototype to 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 demonstrate to the investors. And not only the money, but also uh, we will provide uh, any kind of the resources, uh, including the know-hows, tech know-hows, or mentors, or uh, business relationship, and so on. Uh, and uh, uh, for last three years, uh, I uh, incubated uh, over 200 companies, startups here in Japan. And also uh, from last year, uh, I created uh, the, the hardware startup accelerator in Akihabara. Uh, the which we provide uh, the specific resources to create the hardware de uh, the prototype. Uh, so we will provide a, a 3D scanners, radar printers, uh, for any kind of the manufacturing the, uh, the instruments and so on. And also, uh, uh, the, we, I'm, I'm the one of the member of the uh, non-profitable organization called the ETIC. ETIC, uh, they're uh, providing a services for, for the social entrepreneurs uh, uh, who uh, is uh, doing the, uh, the uh, social activities, uh, non-profitable activities, but they need uh, uh, that some know-hows uh, or coaching uh, to, to create the, uh, the great NPOs. So uh, I, I personally started the seed acceleration program for the social entrepreneurs, uh, which is not profitable. Uh, so uh, not only uh, us, but also so many companies, even the big companies like Docomo or the KDDI or the Toyota, uh, they have started uh, those kind of the incubation program for the young uh, uh, entrepreneurs in Japan. So uh, now booming. So uh, I think uh, I can, we can find a lot of the uh, good symptom uh, to, to be uh, revitalized uh, Japan uh, uh, by the younger generations. But uh, um, so, uh, so finally, uh, so we decided, we, uh, we, we discussed with Auntie that uh, uh, in order to boost that kind of the movement, uh, we'd like to introduce uh, the slush movement to, to the here in Japan. And so why slush Asia? He already explained but uh, uh, I will explain the, my personal experience uh, about the thrush. Um, I joined uh, year 2013 and uh, also the 2014, so uh, two, next two years as a, one of the keynote speaker in Finland. And uh, until then, uh, I haven't exp uh, visited Finland, uh, such a no northern country, freezing country uh, before. But uh, uh, I was so amazed that, that uh, the people are there very hot and uh, so many startups and, and, uh, and the amazing uh, uh, movement has happened uh, there. there. So, and uh, as he explained, uh, so traditionally uh, this kind of the, uh, business pitch uh, presentation, uh, pitch of the presentation and uh, uh, it will done by the uh, very old old hotels or uh, the very uh, the uh, the boring uh, houses uh, buildings but uh, I I was so in, uh, surprised to see that stages uh, like a rock, con rock concert uh, the razor beams are there and the spotlights and cocktail lights and the uh, and the huge screens and the, uh, and the entrepreneurs are showing off uh, the their experiences and the know-hows or how to create the company or the how, how they felt uh, and so on and uh, uh, everybody was got excited and, uh, and they sometimes they stand up stood up and uh, uh, they make a huge uh, standing ovations uh, for for that kind of the story so uh, I was so surprised and uh, uh, and also uh, surprisingly those huge events was driven by the uh, the young students only so over the 2000 uh, students uh, and also uh, I heard that from last year uh, over 70 year old uh, uh, old lady uh, has brandly joined uh, for for the slash movement and uh, they uh, she helped 
uh, to to organize uh, the events. Uh, so those so those kind of the volunteers uh, that were seemed very happily uh, working together uh, for for promoting the the young entrepreneurs. So um, I thought that this kind of thing is very very uh, needed. Uh, for Japanese economy and Asian economy. So as you know, that there are so many conferences or so many events uh, done by the, uh, the event companies or uh, the economic media and so on. But uh, and it, it's, it's very serious and it's nice uh, to have. But on the other hand, uh, I, I've, I found that no, 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 no event like this uh, is done by the, uh, the any other places, so that's why I thought I, I like uh, we we should in, uh, introduce this kind of movement uh, so that we can involve all the uh, the vital uh, younger people uh, connect each other to, to create a community uh, of, uh, of the challengers. So that's why I will introduce. So uh, we has invited over 30 uh, amazing uh, keynote speakers, but uh, this movement is driven by the totally the voluntary movement. So uh, they uh, we 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 didn't pay anything at all uh, for the guarantee or the for for the tra uh, transportation uh, expense and so on. So, but uh, they are very happy, uh, more than happy to come by themselves. Uh, to to tell their stories, so this is amazing things. So and also uh, we will uh, uh, hold uh, uh, the pitch contest, and uh, Japanese uh, partners, big company, including big companies, are very happy to sponsor uh, for giving 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 us uh, the our the prizes. Uh, yeah, this is amazing. I think, and of course, this is. Uh, spoken by the English in English totally, so I I don't think uh, this kind no no nothing like this kind of event is held uh, held by uh, in 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 Japan. So I think it's really innovative uh, for the Japanese society. Yeah. So uh, finally, uh, so after the three months' efforts uh, of the huge uh, so many branches, uh, we finally. Uh, hold uh, this event uh, first time in Japan uh, in on April 24th. Thank you. Okay, um, let me make a, uh, a brief comments on that. Uh, my name is Kaji, and uh, after 25 years of uh, the private sector experience, including Coca-Cola, Nissan, and launching EV all over the world, um, I joined the Prime Minister's office between 2011 and uh, uh, 2013, and spent three years in the Prime Minister's office. I'm bumped with the incident and the, uh, experiencing the administration changes and win the 2020 Olympics. And uh, last year, I got back to the private sector. Um, after three years of experience, I have realized, thanks to the, uh, the st uh, very stable administration, now is the time we have to change this country and uh, revitalize all over Asia. And here comes the slash. So the, I think it, it is the, uh, the project, which, a movement we should uh, count on to, uh, uh, to transform uh, the big uh, trends within our countries. And there are a couple of uniqueness in uh, slash, as he mentioned, especially the speed is uh, incredible. We just started the preparation three months ago. I got a call from the lady who were there. Uh, Amano-san, is she there? No. No, okay. Uh, she, uh, she called me in uh, uh, late January. I needed a place uh, which have the 13 square meters and are there any flat space? That is the, the, the first uh, call from, for me. That, so uh, we just spent uh, three months. And uh, next one is a non-profit. Uh, we are totally in unplayed. We are not paid. Nobody was paid. So this is uh, uh, very unique, and also global, uh, to make the, the, our uh, startup members' uh, uh, skills to communicate in English. We have done a couple of training sessions. So we have found that their uh, intensive passions to communicate is more than uh, uh, we expected. So they are rehearsing. They are exercising. So, so 
please uh, expect uh, the best in the uh, startup pitches. We are going to have uh, 50 startup pitches on uh, one day, which is physical challenges. And uh, fourth one is aspiration. So uh, it is, of course, we have, uh, this is a business, but we have to create the startups as a star, as an uh, object of the aspiration. Otherwise, uh, the, the people, younger people uh, do not aspire to be the uh, uh, startups risking their own lives. So we have to be make it very aspirational. That's why we have Amano-san over there, Amano-san. We have Amano-san. Uh, she's the lady who has been coordinating a lot of very aspirational, aspirational brand uh, that events for the uh, uh, European luxury brands. So uh, to, uh, uh, we are so lucky to have her. So maybe you can, uh, you can uh, easily realize uh, what we are <coughs> I'm saying. So uh, this is the kind of uh, creativity and business and the startup passions, the intersection of uh, these three elements, which is not happening all over the world. And last one is uh, this uh, all the uh, uh, initiative is trying to create the ecosystem, sustainable ecosystem in all over the Asia. So uh, we are going to have the match up uh, session in a, a meeting spot. Uh, we already uh, have the one, more than 160 uh, meeting or set uh, between venture capital and the, the startups, which will be the sign of the, the sustainability uh, ecosystem is going to uh, continue afterwards. So uh, I'm working for Accenture for the full time. Uh, so I would like to try to invite the Japanese bigger companies to the uh, venues by linking do, uh, these uh, communities. I think uh, there are some chemical uh, the, uh, chemical uh, happenings is going to happen. So I think uh, the slash is definitely the intersection um, and we, uh, we have been needed so much. At the end of the day, uh, that, uh, Mark Zuckerberg said that, uh, done is better than perfect. That is the most uh, wanted that aspect of our countries because uh, the Japanese people tend to be, try to be perfect. Sometimes that's miss the, the, the best uh, timing. But uh, thanks to the uh, leadership uh, from uh, the auntie and son -san, we are doing the, those kind of uh, aspira uh, that approaches. So uh, I hope it's going to be successful. Um, uh, Dan is better than perfect. So, but I'm sure that that is going to be close to the perfect. I was very amazed when I saw the, the movie, uh, which is in uh, YouTube already. The old the, the construction is going on in a, a stormy Monday evening, 24 hours. So you will be amazed how much uh, progress is going to be there. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now let's open the floor to questions and so on. Working media first. I have a question. I'm here since 2000. When I came to Japan, there was the IT bubble, there was a bit valley, uh, and then um, the stock market, basically the bubble disappeared and the bit valley went with it. What is different this time? Do you want to take that one? I wasn't here in 2000. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, at the time, uh, not only Japan, but also even the U.S., uh, the same situation. But uh, at the time, uh, the, some people was believing the potentiality uh, or the, uh, the growth of the new economy. But uh, as the most of the people were suspicious uh, about the, the, the dot-com companies and so on. But in these days, uh, people are using the, the internet very uh, frequently, uh, the tens of times in a day, uh, that using the micro smartphones and tablets and PC and so on. Um, so, and there, uh, people are buying the e uh, through on the e-commerce website. So, uh, no one um, believes that uh, the dot com is a bubble. Um, so. In these days, uh, actually, uh, very growing startups is popping up, and so at the time, uh, the, the the relatively, if we compare today, uh, the number of the startups was less, uh, very less, less than the today, and also uh, the so, so in other words, uh, so many younger people uh, starting the new companies by themselves, and also it's not the uh, the bubble. And uh, the, 
investors, uh, the Japanese venture capitals, uh, aggressively invest into those companies, and uh, and also the many many companies are growing very quick, quickly. So we can we can see the many track records in these days. So uh, I think uh, this is real. And uh, uh, but sometimes economy goes to the bubble, and after after that, uh, the, after the crash of the bubble, uh, they tend to become uh, uh, very con too conservative. But uh, I think uh, this this time uh, that this movement is the real and uh, much bigger than the uh, the before. I think does it does it make sense? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> may, I, may I build on that his his comment? Mm -hmm. um, it, it is true that the current administration is very keen to boosting the innovations, in, in addition to the uh, startups. So uh, thanks to the uh, the growth strategy and geared toward the, the, uh, promoting the startups, that uh, uh, municipality is like a, a Fukuoka, it's assigned as a special zone for the startups. So uh, it is led by the young uh, mayor, Takashima. So this is one of the signs. And also, maybe you also read it, OECD mentioned about a small uh, medium enterprise is going to be the driving force for the transformation. That is a sign of the, uh, the uh, passion of the administration or uh, 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 lots of uh, powerhouses. So, so I, think, I think this is not a, uh, uh, this is not a fad. I think it's real. OK. I have one more comment. Um, I, I wasn't here in, in 2000, but uh, uh, if I look at uh, what I've seen and heard here in the, in the Japanese startup and uh, venture capital uh, ecosystem, uh, uh, and if I, if I work back, like imagine what it was in the 2000s. Uh, as, as these guys mentioned, this will be uh, an event completely in English. Uh, this will, we won't, uh, we won't be providing uh, simultaneous translation at the event either. Uh, initially, when Slush started in Finland, uh, uh, there were some people who were saying that, uh, are, is it fair to put Finnish people on the same stage with uh, American or, or British people whose, whose mother native tongue is English? And uh, will Finns even have a chance in, in, in a pitching contest, for example? Now, six years after Slush has been around, uh, nobody's uh, asking that question anymore. In fact, the next web, uh, one of the most influential uh, tech medias in the, uh, in the US, I believe, uh, said that, uh, I don't remember the exact quote, but they said that uh, basically Finns are showing the Americans how to do events. Uh, so in uh, those, in six years, I think there was a lot of change. Uh, since we've done it in Finland already in six years, uh, Hopefully, we can do it much even faster this time in Japan. OK. Uh, you're a working journalist? OK, please, yeah. Thank you for taking my question. My name is Cody Ida with NHK Television. Sonsan, I was wondering if you can talk a little bit about yourself, what motivated you to become an entrepreneur. As Kaji-san touched upon, um, within the Japanese primary educational system, where teach not to take ris risks, to avert risks. So was it something that your teacher said that inspired you, or did you have a certain experience that energized you to become an entrepreneur? Um, my father is uh, uh, the, also the entrepreneur, and also the, my brother is also. So I have four brothers, and I'm the youngest, and the, the Masayoshi is the second, young, uh, the elder uh, brother. Um, and, uh, but. Uh, so my father, or the so all the my family members, uh, uh, was a, were the good teacher for me, and uh, this is a funny story. But uh, some, when I was uh, going to the elementary school, uh, and I come back home, and uh, my father uh, asked me that, uh, hey, hey Taizo, what, what uh, did you uh, the study in school this 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 uh, today? And uh, I will uh, answer. Sometimes I will answer that uh, I. I, I learned uh, uh, how to divide the numbers. So of the bunshi, uh, and uh, denominator, denominator, and so I will sw swap uh, the numbers, uh, flip and flip down uh, the uh, uh, the upper the down and the and multiple, and then uh, 
and then he said that, wow, this is amazing and this is good, but don't trust uh, the teacher. <laughs> he, he frequently told me, then, uh, and sometimes I, ans I reply back that, uh, hey, uh, my teacher is a really great guy and uh, uh, the school is very nice. And so I think it's totally uh, the op opposite that the pa parents sometimes convince to the kids that, uh, hey, you go to school and you can learn a lot of great things. And sometimes the kids uh, 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 they hesitating to go into the school. But so I'm, I'm supporting the school, going to the school. And my father told me that, uh, hey, don't trust the teacher and so on. But uh, at the time, I, I was wondering why, why he, is saying that, he was saying that. But in these days, uh, I clearly, I totally understood, understood what he meant. Uh, that, uh, so that, that his, what he said. Uh, means uh, the true so uh, true mean meanings of what he said is that uh, uh, the think by yourself and create uh, your idea by yourself. Uh, don't please do not uh, follow blindly to the uh, the existing uh, traditional theories. So uh, in order to uh, the make. Uh, make um, me remember clearly, uh, he was telling the, such a shocking uh, phrases, don't trust the teacher and something like that. But uh, uh, so it was gr really great uh, the, uh, teaching for me. So that's why I, I, when, when I was a student of the Tokyo University, uh, I, start, I was so inspired by the, uh, Jerry Yan, the founder of the Yahoo Inc. Uh, that, and also, he was also at the time, he was a Stanford University student. And uh, uh, I was so inspired and I was so encouraged by him to start uh, my new startup by, by my company uh, by myself. So that's the first career, uh, of, of, uh, first step of my career. So uh, um, generally speaking, uh, the Japanese uh, education systems are not so encouraging. Uh, the entrepreneurship or taking risks, but uh, um, but I I I, I, I had a lot of stories that uh, some uh, some schools or some teachers start uh, teaching uh, or the learning together about the entrepreneurship or the creativity or the innovation innov being innovative uh, or yeah so I think uh, the it's a matter of time to totally change. Um, I'm a German freelance journalist, uh, Martin Fritz. A question to Mr. Kaji. You said you worked two years in the Kante. Um, three years, actually. Uh, three years. Um, so I was wondering, uh, you, you were talking about deregulating uh, all these, you know, these dense regulations you have in Japan. Um, is your impression that, okay, th this administration is keen on innovation, but the bureaucrats, I think, they're not keen on innovation. They like things like they are, and they don't want to change them. Uh, have you the impression that these bureaucrats are actually really willing to deregulate and to to give up power to this private sector? What is your yes, opinion? Yes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. They are very uh, uh, keen to uh, transform. But uh, uh, it takes a time because the system itself has been uh, continued after the uh, uh, World War II. So that has been uh, sustaining the uh, uh, rapid growth of Japan for more than uh, 50 years. So uh, they have to be changed. And the uh, current administration is very uh, keen to transform it. But it's going to take a time. So that is why uh, I'm uh, kind of uh, supporter to be the uh, relatively uh, the longer uh, administrations. So uh, this is the time for the uh, fundamental change, I think. So I'm sure they are very uh, serious. They are very keen. If I can build on that, um, I think it's great to uh, uh, de continue deregulating and giving entrepreneurs what they need uh, to start companies. I do also think it's very important to uh, promote, uh, make people excited about starting companies in the first place. Um, 
after there is uh, some enthusiasm into starting companies and building your own thing, uh, I think the, uh, it will be also much easier to uh, get those deregulations done. As I mentioned, what has happened in Finland, uh, yes, the government has been helping with deregulation. Uh, however, uh, it's, it's basically this new energy in, in, in starting companies uh, has been, has came first and, and deregulation has happened second as a result. Like what well, the government has thought that what, uh, what can we do to help this, uh, this kind of movement? And then after that. I'm Daisuke Furuja from Asahi Shinbun. I have two questions. Uh, first one is for Son san. Uh, yeah, last week there was a news show. The title is Venture Bubble. <laughs> yeah, uh, especially after so called Gumi Shock, uh, some people are afraid of this booming might be a bubble. So, what do you think the effect of Gumi Shock? And the second question is for yeah, Mr. Anti Soninen. Um, why uh, have slash Asia chosen Japan? Uh, there are some other startup market, a lively startup market in Asia, for example, China, India, Singapore, why Japan? Do you want to go first? Um, <clears throat> it's, a, that, it's just one company, example of the one company, and, uh, uh, but uh, I don't think uh, the other companies uh, who are waiting for uh, the being public to the stock market it are the same kind of situation. Um, so uh, I heard that the, so many companies are waiting uh, to be listed on the stock market, and the, and the most of the companies uh, are the, the very uh, growing very nicely. So uh, uh, I don't think it's a shock, and uh, and also. Uh, I don't think uh, uh, that it disturbs the, the, the such a mega trends of the startup company. Start, uh, new new startups are growing nicely. Uh, to uh, yeah. So as for as for the question uh, about why why Japan, uh, there's many uh, many events uh, in in the West in the startup and and. Uh, uh, yeah, in the startup space, there's the events also in Asia. Uh, this is also a, a partly from my own experience, but uh, I've I've noticed that there's a, a bit of a divide between the East and the West, and and uh, 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 that is now starting to uh, uh, break, or let's say like it's it's going to um, uh, the East and the West are joining forces more and more nowadays, uh, and I think it's a priority for many many uh, different organi organizations to also uh, have, have some kind of uh, activity in Asia. And uh, since most of the uh, fastest growing uh, economies are, are now in Asia, there's uh, India, there's uh, China, uh, there's lots of great stuff here. Uh, so yes, there was, of course, interest in, in Asia on the slush uh, uh, Finland side. Uh, I think uh, the the thing that uh, in in the end made this uh, thing happen was that uh, there was just uh, a determined uh, group of people uh, here in Tokyo who decided to do it. My name is Khail Hassan. I'm Ambassador of Bahrain. I'm very impressed by your presentation, and I really enjoyed it thoroughly. I think. If the young youth in the Arab world, you know, heard you before 2011, they changed their mind from Arab Spring to Slush Spring. <laughs> My question is, you know, suppose you are a committee selecting the youth for this incubator startup. What sort of quality you look for? Thank you. Um, so uh, the incubation programs that I mentioned in my presentation, they were 
they're partly the same community in Finland, but they're different organization. Uh, as for Slush, uh, it's all uh, we run it uh, through a voluntary basis. Uh, so I think the easiest way to uh, join the join the uh, join Slush is just uh, contact someone and say that hey, I want to help. Uh, for example, we have uh, uh, Jenny here sitting in the audience who uh, works on marketing in, in, in the Finnish side of Slush. And the way that she joined the movement was that uh, she sent a message to the main organizer in Finland is that is someone doing uh, Instagram, I could do that for you guys. And then she was on and uh, the next thing you know, now she's the CMO over there. Okay. Uh, Patrick, I think it has to be the last question because Taizo san has to leave on, yes. on time. Okay. Uh, Patrick Walde, German newspaper, Frankfurt Allgemeine. I have two questions, one to Mr. Sun and one to Mr. Kaji. Uh, first the one to Mr. Kaji. Uh, one parallel, if you compare, if you look back to the uh, dot-com bubble uh, about 15 years ago, is that in both cases we had a very quite expensive monetary policy. So the the dot-com bubble was fooled to to a large degree, I would argue, by monetary policy. Don't you see that something like that is happening in Japan right now as well? And the, because you have this very expensive monetary policy, not only in Japan but in the U.S. as well, so that might fool a bubble which you would not like in the end. And this, uh, the question to Sun San is, can you give me some examples? You were talking about deregulation, the need for deregulation, further deregulation. Can you give us some examples? What are the biggest hindrances in Japan for startups? Okay, uh, let me uh, answer the question. Uh, we have to learn from the failure, uh, past failures, especially from the corporate governance uh, standpoint and also that the stock exchange uh, system itself. So uh, we are not uh, the uh, uh, organization or the person who are controlling those kind of regulations. But uh, it looks like a, a lots of lots of uh, regulation change has been done uh, since the dot-com bubble is gone. So I think, uh, I, I hope that uh, this uh, trend is going to be more controlled and more uh, uh, achieving that uh, stabilized uh, growth instead of a rapid growth, which uh, we are experiencing right now. Though the, the, uh, the growth rate and the increase rate of the uh, stock price is pretty stable, but it's not a, a, a fast compared with the dot-com bubble. So I think uh, uh, we have learned a lot, and I think that uh, administration, uh, the Japanese government, uh, will uh, be smarter compared with uh, 10 years ago. Uh, may I confirm uh, your question, uh, the, the example of the, the regulations yeah, in Japan? Regulations, like uh, regulations we'd like to change, uh, I see. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, I don't have an uh, actual uh, the image, uh, but there is a company called Wheel. Uh, they are uh, the spin-off from the, uh, the Sony and uh, Honda, so big companies, uh, good big manufacturers, uh, they are creating the, uh, uh, the are chair, wheelchair, wheelchair, and uh, so uh, the smart wheelchair uh, driven by the uh, the electric, electric, it's kind of an electric vehicle, and uh, uh, they are creating an amazingly nice uh, wheelchair, smart wheelchair, by themselves, and uh, they have uh, exposure. Uh, Exposed uh, to the many conferencing or the expo expo in the world, and uh, they got so many hours uh, in in the many places. But uh, in Japan, uh, there is a regulation that uh, they they can't get the subsidy uh, by the uh, of the uh, insurance. Uh, and, uh, to, yeah, uh, by the government. Uh, so you so sometimes handicapped men uh, can can buy uh, the wheelchair uh, with a cheaper, very very cheaper cost because of the subsidy by the government. But uh, unfortunately, uh, they, so the existing regulations of, for the of the wheelchair is uh, the 
they need this, this kind of the hand, handle to push by the, some people. But uh, uh, it's a self-driving uh, smart wheelchair, so they don't have any handle <laughs> to push by someone, uh, healthy, healthy people. So that's why uh, they couldn't get uh, any subsidy uh, by the government. So that's why uh, their uh, price, retail price is very, very expensive. Uh, compared to the uh, the traditional wheelchair, uh, the dumb wheelchair uh, with cheaper cost. So that's why they can't sell uh, the, the wheelchair in Japan. But on the other hand, uh, in Singapore or the, in, in other countries, uh, they can get, the, uh, even in the US, they can get the subsidy uh, by the government. So, so their prices, they, their product is very competitive uh, to, to, to buy, uh, to buy the by the handicapped men, people. So uh, even though they're a very very Japanese startup and uh, totally the, uh, spin off by the Japanese big companies, and this technology is amazing, but they can't sell in Japan. So that is the one good example of the regulations to change. So uh, and I actually I introduce uh, this example to the. Uh, uh, the uh, Minister of the Economics and so on, uh, and General Affairs, uh, and then uh, they were uh, s they recognized that that regulations to change, so they are seriously uh, take it take it into seriously to change how to change the regulations uh, as quickly as possible. Okay, unfortunately, uh, we have to close the session today. Mr. Son has to leave, and uh, but before he runs off, uh, I would like to offer him and the other guest a one-year honorary membership, so that you have an incentive to come back very often Thank you and join much. us here in the bar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.